Well, hi everyone, let's wait one or two minutes more before starting. <clears throat> okay, uh, I think we can start. So Welcome everyone to this interim of the core working group. I am Marco Tilka, my co chair is Jaime Jimenez. As a reminder, the not well summarized in the slide applies. Uh, please check the links for more details. It's not only about IPR, it's uh, also in the special about our code of conduct. So be nice and professional uh, to each other. Uh, we have a relatively a uh, small agenda for today, I, I believe, we'll end up the meeting uh, earlier than usual. Um, it's some status update, uh, as usual, recently on the two core conf documents under SG review, uh, on HREF especially and, and Coral. And then we have a presentation from John on the recently resubmitted uh, Coopa tax document. Um, I plan to spend a few minutes in the end to discuss about uh, the next interim meetings. Uh, after this one, but that's for the AOB. Does anyone want to bash this agenda for today? If none, that's up to Karsten with CoreConf. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> so I haven't um, created slides for today because essentially we, we haven't uh, ongoing discussion uh, that we need to finish before we can complete closing the discusses. <clears throat> so Rob Wilton uh, sent uh, the forward of three emails last Friday to the core mailing list. Unfortunately, under a somewhat uh, uh, <laughs> misleading title, something about the Yang catalog or something, but th that's not the subject of those uh, uh, messages. Uh, yeah, I, I'm also often making the mistake of not adjusting a subject line when forwarding things. Um, anyway, so we, we, we do have the remaining discussion open on uh, what the relation is uh, between uh, Yang SIDS and Yang names. Th there is a somewhat complex relation set up in the current SID. Um, document, and uh, Rob has been proposing to to simplify this, losing a little bit of functionality, but we aren't even clear how much functionality we would be losing uh, there, but it might uh, in particular make the job of intermediates that need to translate between the, the SID and the name form um, much easier. So it, it's... Um, um, well, if, if this was entirely my draft, then I would say, of course, uh, Rob is right, let, let's do that. Uh, but of course, we have uh, several people who have contributed to this draft, and I think we need to um, do this uh, as a working group. And so um, please look at those uh, messages, look at the, the way Core SID is currently setting this up, and uh, state your opinion. I'll state it now if, if you do have one at hand. Uh, 
Yeah, it's one of those questions where there is not a single right answer. <laughs> I mean, it's not the question whether two plus two is four or five, uh, but it, it's really a question, how, how do we design something so it actually uh, can survive for a couple of decades? And th that's always a difficult uh, question to, to discuss, but I think we are very, very close to finishing um, this uh, now with this last one discuss outstanding. And uh, yeah, if, if there is no strong opposition uh, in the next uh, couple of days, then, then probably I will uh, jump the gun and, and simply accept those changes or write text for those changes. And um, of course, the working group should be involved in, in that. So it would be uh, interesting to hear uh, from people and interesting to hear from the chairs whether they want to to introduce uh, some some further delay by by having the working group properly uh, participate. So that's all I have. Uh, yeah, Francesca is asking how big do I envision these changes to be? Uh, with respect to the the amount of text, um, actually, I think the, the, they will remove uh, some of the text that is trying to weasel around uh, what, what we actually mandate here. Um, so we will have a very, very simple uh, rule. Um, with respect to the way this protocol is, is run in the long run, well, it, it's, um, it, it does change things only after the Yang modules uh, being, being um, um, communicated about here actually change themselves. So it's really uh, the matter how, uh, of how we do we reflect evolution in the Yang modules. So it's really hard to, to even predict whether the, the change is material or just a simpler way of, of describing what we would be doing anyway. <clears throat> but right now, there are avenues open that, that uh, we would be closing uh, and, and making things uh, much more mechanical. Yeah, yeah, sure. So n nothing changes on the wire, uh, but the, the way we, we expect the designated experts to to operate and we expect the the software that um, generates these sets uh, to operate um, or to actually to be used uh, less how it operates that that does change a little bit so i don't even have a clear cut answer to that question <laughs> sorry okay. about that. I, probably, I can talk i i probably uh would have to look at the diff to yeah. really validate if, if a full last call rerun is necessary. Um, the thing that worries me is that uh, that would take two more weeks. And then we would have to also give the ISG either like an um, unofficial chance to, to review the changes and, and possibly like change their ballot or I think that would be enough. The other option is to actually like bring it back to the telechat so that they, the rest of the ASG has a chance to look at it, but I don't think it's necessary in this case. Um, but even then, like at least one more week for the ASG to, to take a look at it and unofficially confirm that everything is fine. And then we're dangerously close to March. Yep. Um, and we don't want to, uh, we don't want to like, we want to have this done before the ISG um, changes, which sh should not, I don't think it should be a problem, but um, yeah, it's always best to have it done before it change, the ISG changes. Yeah, and it creates new work for the people coming in and so on. So <clears throat> I think that that's an important uh, consideration. Yeah, I have then done much worse changes in Auth48. 
so uh, yeah, I, I can't really help you answer this question, but I will generate a PR uh, unless uh, we, we have uh, significant uh, uh, input on this question and uh, then see uh, how, how that is uh, accepted. And then you can yeah. look at it and see what the text changes look like. Yes, and and again, this is just in the case that we need to rerun the full uh, last call because this is still answering uh, Rob's comment. So yes. it could be seen as you, you know we're fixing things and that's it. We don't need to do much more. Yeah. And that was the seed document, Karsten, because yes. a young zebra should be well almost done. At least all these cusses were were raised, but maybe yeah. there is a comment left. Um, the, the, there are a few last minute runs that need to be done through the documents, uh, aligning uh, dates on, on Yang modules and things like that. And uh, I would like to combine that with uh, answering the, the comments. There's a little bit of, of editorial stuff that, that uh, still needs to be done, but I wanted to have the, the big um, issues, the discuss level issues out of the way before we do the editorial work because uh, yeah the, the editorial stuff is going to change with with uh, big issues all right and thanks for the work on that too by the way <laughs> done so far sure okay uh, i think we know how to proceed with this any more comment on coreconf it no then we can switch to the next pair of documents. I, I think there's update, especially on href, not really on Coral itself. You want to cover href, Karsten? Yeah, I'm not sure that, that actually a lot changed since we last reported this. Uh, so work is ongoing on the implementation side. We are trying to, trying to clean up our test vectors uh, and are finding little nits that need to be are resolved and uh, I hope uh, at the time of the next interim we will have all, all these nits out of the way and can actually decide uh, how many of these test vectors we actually incorporate in the document because there should be some examples there but not the whole test vector uh, stack because that gets very boring very quickly. Um, so th that's something that should happen in the next two weeks. Um, but it's not yet done. Right. Uh, it's still good to have somewhere, maybe on GitHub, the full set of uh, tests anyway. Certainly. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thanks. Uh, just to double check, I think there's nothing specific to report on Coral itself instead. Right. Christian also. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Then we can move to uh, co-op attacks, and that's John. Hi, John. Uh, uh, thank you. You can share the uh, slides yourself. You should be ready for sharing. OK. All right. Uh, so, do you see the slides? Yes. Good. Uh, so this uh, picture is meant to illustrate a distributed amplification attack using co-op, for example, multicast. Uh, and this is the document co-op's attack. I will also talk about the status of the echo request draft. Co-op attacks is authored by me, Christian Amsus, Göran, Francesca, and another John, John Fornehed. Uh, so, first, a little background. If you don't remember, so Coop Attacks is an informational companion document to the Echo Request Tag Token Processing document. That document is a standard track, and so it will hopefully very soon be published as an RFC. Content of Coop Attacks is some introduction which discusses security properties um, important for co-op, especially actuators. Uh, then it describes some known attacks on co-op, 
mostly in a theoretical way. And some of these attacks are later mitigated by the, or can be mitigated by the echo request draft document. Then it describes attacks using co-op, namely denial of service and amplification attacks. Uh, co-op echo request tag provides uh, mitigations to some of these. It Echo can be used against delays attacks and denial of service attacks. Um, should be clear is some denial of service that it's not a solution for everything. Uh, request tag can be used against the request fragment rearrangement attacks. And the updated token processing mitigates the response delay and mismatch attack, uh, hopefully to 100% if we got the text correct. Uh, so we recently updated uh, the version to 02. And 02 addresses almost all received comments on 00 and 01. Uh, there is a new paragraph explaining the concept of freshness and how it relates to replay protection and sequence numbers. Uh, there are more references and updated reference text to the soon to be published RFC uh, 9105, Echo Request Act Token Processing. Uh, Karsten made a comment about the RFC 2119 terminology um, and wanted an explanation of what the meaning was in the information draft. I think it's perfectly fine to use in the information draft, but I don't think these drafts need it. So I have, we have deleted all normative text in this document. I think that's an improvement. Probably also makes it easy to agree on the descriptions in the draft. Uh, it's easy to describe attacks. These are like facts. What to do about them should and must or not facts. And it's uh, opinions. Uh, then corrected text on OSCOR over TCP. It's not TCP that offers protection. It is if you use the special uh, replay protection, a TLS-like replay protection in OSCOR. Um, then uh, we added a sentence, why misbinding attacks do not work in HTTPS. Um, and then after a comment from Karsten, the, the example with a homeless man, a hitman, and somebody getting killed was replaced with a girl stealing apples and an evil queen poisoning apples. Uh, then there's uh, quite a lot of small editorial changes. Uh, several of these were based from, on comments from Karsten. And I made uploaded these slides um, this morning, but they were at lunch and they're already outdated. After that, uh, Christian provided a pull request to fix the remaining the part of the remaining issue that was not fixed in 02. So that will hopefully be merged soon. Uh, current status and next steps. So this is a companion document to echo request tag. Echo request tag is in OAT 48. And the information here is also outdated. This has now been this, the fix to issue 77 have been merged. And the, the current document is approved by two of the authors and the AD. So we're waiting for Joran, which will hopefully approve the document soon. And then this can move forward in the... It will never happen, John. <laughs> it will never happen. <laughs> <laughs> then you know who to blame, at least, if you wait on this document. Yeah. Uh, then uh, at uh, ECHO, this uh, co-op attacks document was uh, presented at ITF 111. Um, and then the conclusion was that uh, one of uh, one uh, good option was to make a BCP. And uh, there's recently been discussion both in think to think rd and on the core list about such a BCP. I think my I understood these PCPs to be published quite soon. I think now I understand that Karsten wants this to be published uh, later after research. I think that 
might be a good idea, but we definitely need to do something soon as well. I don't think thing to thing argue would be soon enough. Uh, attacks using co op is happening now. Um, uh, so, third point here, I think we should publish co op's attacks as a information documents um, uh, relatively soon, um, as suggested by security AD Benjamin Kaduk. He took an example what the UTA working group did when they published uh, mitigations and a companion document uh, illustrating, uh, talking about the attacks. Uh, and a first step to that would of course be working group adoption. Comments, questions? Kirsten, go ahead. Yeah, I <clears throat> sent a couple of messages to the mailing list that, that I would be reading aloud now. Um, so I think th this is really important. Um, and uh, we uh, kind of have been uh, sidetracked by, by publishing the echo request tag document, which is, um, well, yeah, providing some protocol elements that help a lot here, but uh, that means that we have uh, essentially forgotten to uh, provide the bigger picture. And, and I think it's good that we, we have an initiative to uh, work on this. Um, one problem we had uh, in, in this space is that we don't necessarily agree on on the the, the the severity of certain kinds of attacks and the value of, of um, certain mitigation strategies and so on. Um, so it, it's relatively hard to do a consensus document uh, in this uh, space. I mean, we, the consensus is that something somebody should do something about this. But uh, beyond that, we, we are a little bit stuck sometimes. And um, my, oh, Marco dropped out. Uh, my um, view of this is that uh, we really should uh, be serious in, in understanding uh, this space before we do the next set of recommendations. So there, there are recommendations in 7252, there are recommendations in, in 9175, including an, an update um, to, to the way some processing rules uh, work in 7252. Um, and um, we, um, I think if we want to do this right, then we should have the, the whole picture. And maybe we also should uh, separate the attacks on co-op and the attacks using co-op uh, from each other. So this, this uh, last slide is talking about denial of service and application attacks which I think is, is different from the question, what can you do to the communication between two uh, co-op uh, implementations uh, by blocking a request or exchanging a request or manipulating something somewhere. Um, so uh, th th there are different targets here and, and different kinds of attacks. So it's maybe useful to separate this. So in the end, I would uh, think that um, it would be useful to have a document that, that really provides information. And if we can get these also data um, on uh, what's going on in the DOS and amplification environment. And um, yeah, in, in some places we can just shrug and say, oh, uh, they, they should have uh, read the document. Um, but uh, uh, still, uh, we want to uh, work on, on making it less likely that uh, uh, more serious implementations of co uh, provide the same uh, attack angle. So I think it would be good to, to uh, collect some information and also discuss a little bit on uh, the, the cost of certain mitigations. So if, if you use echo for instance then what uh, could be a single round trip becomes two round trips and th that's a definite cost in many cases uh, that, that's not a problem 
in many cases, that's unfortunately inevitable. So uh, it doesn't really matter whether it's a problem. Um, but uh, I think we also should look at the, the cost equation of, of the various mitigations. And finally, we also should look at the mitigations um, with respect to their actual effect, because sometimes mitigations just mean that the, the attackers will use a slightly different angle and we we know should need to we, should, we need to understand uh, whether the mitigations we propose have this property because then we shouldn't be seriously re recommending them or recommending mitigations that that don't have that uh, uh, property so i think that this requires uh, uh, a lot of discussion and and uh, actual research input and that's why why with the new secor activity in the uh, research group, I was thinking whether that might be the right place uh, to do this. And uh, then based on that information, we can even go ahead and uh, define a BCP because we have all the data and can make somewhat authoritative uh, statements about what should and should not be done. Yeah, I, I agree with basically most things you say but i think we also need to consider the cost of not doing mitigations these attacks are happening now one could argue that this research you talk about should have done five years ago before or ten years ago before publishing <laughs> all these iot rfcs uh, but i think we at least need to make sure this is not getting worse. I think what you talk about, the things to think, RG, uh, things you're talking about and doing that before doing an RBCP sounds like a good plan, but I think we also need to do something now. I think a minimum requirement is to publish uh, a description of attacks. I think we could remove all uh, recommendation most recommendations are gone from the co-op attacks paper i think there are some remaining these could also go and just be a description of attacks without saying how to mitigate them yeah i also think we should have something informational now and then of course more work is required to, to build something uh, nicer and final and sure they would require more research work i think you're also aligned in terms of um well not timeline in detail but as a sequence of steps right you're you look like on the same page uh, thinking of uh, john's mail uh, sent earlier today am i right yeah so i think we have differences in the details uh <laughs> yeah so <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I still think that the, the um, we could write this this document describing the, the state of the union in two steps. We could uh, start by publishing uh, this is happening now and uh, then extend expand this document to uh, here's more data about that. Uh, here's the, the exact reason why um, these attacks were possible, even though uh, Co-op actually has some some uh, mechanisms in place that should have been preventing them, um, and so on. So I, I think we can do this in two steps. We we don't have to to uh, breed this document for five years or something. Um, but uh, on the other hand, um, putting an RFC number on the document doesn't make it significantly more uh, valuable. So. Um, I think that, that the more important part is to actually gather the, the information in an authoritative way. But uh, looking, uh, looking like we are reacting is, is certainly a good thing, even if it's five years late. Yeah, I think putting an RFC number on it shows that IETF is taking this serious instead of today when it's an individual draft. Um, I think one option for splitting is to publish very theoretical attacks right now, maybe even remove everything in the co-op's attacks document about which kind of implementations and which countries these attacks are. And 
do all these more detailed practical things in, in, in a later Things to Thing RG document. So if I understand correctly, this co-op attacks draft can at least mention the fact that co-op can be used to mount attacks. But then we leave for the for the future document more details about that. I, I I think all the diagrams in the current document should be published quite soon. So the current document does two different things. It, it does the attacks on co-op part and the attacks with co-op uh, yeah. part. And, and which which half of that are we discussing right now? I would like to publish both of these. Both of the, these are nice companions to the echo request tag. If it's one document or several, I doesn't really matter. But I think IETF should publish this kind of information quite soon. I don't think it's OK to wait several years for thing to thing RG uh, working group. Then I think. Uh, I think we, we, we need to publish a tag. I think we need to be stricter in in future RFCs, even if we don't have all the understanding, if we, even if we don't have a BCP in place. The understanding, we, we do have some knowledge, and that is that the current documents are quite soft and core co-op is used for denial of service attacks. And it's hard to even say that uh, they are violating ITF uh, requirements because the requirements yeah, that's are the part very where we have the, the different views and uh, I think we should focus on things where we do have consensus it doesn't make sense to to come up with a, a position that is controversial and say we should publish this quickly we should publish I, I, quickly I what we think is uncontroversial I don't understand what is controversial if we remove all the guidance on how to mitigate. Yeah, and that has what, happened what, already. Sorry, what we, what we, excuse me. What what we are uh, actually describing is how people have uh, not implemented the protocol correctly, and what the consequences of that were. I don't. I don't think it's clear that they have implemented the protocol in something is yeah, wrong, but it's different. not clear that they don't follow the RFCs. That's where we differ in, in assessing the situation. Yeah. Is there any other use in core? I'm sure there is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's mostly document authors around, actually. Yeah. I think if Core is not doing something now, one might come to the conclusion that it's controversial to publish more RFCs that, that might cause denial of service. But Karsten, I understood you'd be fine um, already to document this informational uh, attacks against co-op, at least, right? That part looks just fine. We definitely should be speaking about uh, what has been happening in places where people didn't heed what the, the uh, documents say. Okay. Um, but it's not not something. Um, oh, we messed this up. But it's uh, there are certain consequences for the actions of implementers, and here they are. Do you think the current draft is missing something about this right now? Well, I made a small <laughs> pull request with a few places where I think the text is. Uh, uh, little bit on, on the wrong side of that argument. Um, so again, the, the first thing we should agree on is splitting that thing between attacks on co-op and, and attacks using co-op. Because I think it's this, there's absolutely no reason the two things need to be in the same document, um, except that, that they both were, were triggered 
by some some but by the the echo request Act document and and some common mitigations uh, that, that are in that document but i think for the the current purpose uh documenting what you should not do um uh, i think we can separate this i think we can be really quick on the dos side with that i would uh, i'm fine with separating but to clarify, you would keep in this first document the attacks against co-op and you you would entirely take out the part of using co-op for the OS, right? That's the second document. Right. And that's actually the one where we should have the the adoption yeah. call first. But, but do the only question is, where do we have the adoption call? Right, I guess maybe we need to split the document first. At least we need to split the document first before we have any adoption call. But we could, if I understand you correctly, you would be fine with the adoption call on the attacks on co-op, but not on the attacks yes. using co-op. No, I'm I'm actually fine with an adoption call on both uh, parts. I'm just okay, wondering yeah. where that adoption call should occur. Yeah, that's that's a minor point. So uh, in yeah. the end it's it's just going to make our life harder to make the wrong decision here uh while doing this in the first place is really the important part but to, to be clear I, I was asking before uh, about removing the part on using co-op to perform the attack would you like to remove it entirely i mean not even mentioning that anymore in the first document well th there are now two documents we just split them and the first document is about attacks on co-op. So we're not removing anything. We are splitting in two documents. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So John, how does, it sound, how does it sound to you to have uh, the split done in the near future? And then we can go for adoption of the first document then. Yeah, that sounds, uh, that sounds good should be reasonably easy because uh, the one part is in section two and the other part is in section three <laughs> yeah I, I think uh, we the authors can provide a split uh, quite soon yeah that'd be great thanks okay and the next question was is this something the core working group should do or the uh think thing research group should do uh, and of course we seem to have different perceptions of how long something would take. Yeah, I, I don't really care about the um, who is doing it, but I would have. I would like to have it published soon, not in a few years. I think you can publish several documents with different um, angles on this topic. Right. And I also think we need to discuss how to uh, how to make requirements stricter for for example the, the group co-op document and the conditional um, attributes I think um, yeah. So by the way there there's already some text about this topic in group combis uh that uh, that we added following your input on this topic john uh so yeah. hopefully it's better than it used to be <laughs> that's great i will review that i think we are people in the queue hi uh this, i i think it would be interesting to publish uh if you want to do it at a bcp though you can't do it in a research group right it has to be in the working group so um if whether it's informational or whatever if it's anything above informational you pretty much are uh, stuck doing it through the RSD track. I think nothing in, in the BCP would be a new document. It would not be any part of this document. I think me and Kirsten agree on that. Yep. Yara was in the queue, then disconnected, and then he's back. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I mean, this interesting experience. If you raise your hand, you suddenly disappear from the meeting. That's, that's <laughs> something to try out in, in the real meetings as well. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add that, uh, I mean, on the timeline here, Karsten, you, you 
you uh, request uh, a research activity around uh, around the tax, which I think is great. Do you know of people interested in working with that? I mean, there are co-authors of this document, but this document has taken some time. Do you know others that are interested in in uh, doing more like paper um, publishing type of research? Well, the people, people have been reporting this on, on the level of uh, blogs. I'm, I'm uh, not sure there are a lot of, of research level contributions uh, we could point to, but of course there are researchers that, that look at uh, DDoS. So being able to pull them in may be one of the advantages of doing this in the research group. Yeah, I mean, that, that would be great. I just don't know the people. so. If we if we think that those are available, then that sounds like the right right way, at least on that part of the of the work. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Sean and Joran. Any more opinion input? Okay, then the next step is really about doing the split up front and then we should be able to move on with adoption with the first document at least sounds good john uh, yeah okay uh, thanks and then we have a discussion on what to do with the second and in, in which group that should be yeah. thank you very much for this work thank you Okay, if there's no other technical topic or document to discuss, we are to the um, A or B. Yeah, just a few words in the next interim meetings. Um, we have two left before ITF 113, and I will not be able to attend the next one on February 16th, since I'll be away basically the whole week uh, for a project final review. And this was already known when we scheduled this interim series, uh, but it was a one-off absence for me. And uh, this was still the best compromise to avoid a worse cadence for Seabor and some of its uh, key participants. Now, unfortunately, I've learned this week that Jaime would not be available either uh, due to personal issues. So I, I, I'm afraid we have to cancel the meeting on February 16. Uh, I was hoping if rather than just keeping it, we can uh, reschedule it uh, for the week after, of course, not Wednesday, because they would collide with Seabor. But keeping the same time 15 UTC, uh, I see two options. Uh, Tuesday 22, if LP1 at the same time is not a problem, or Thursday 24, which should be in the week without an ISG telechat. So it should work for Francesca too. So probably overall Thursday 24 uh, should be a better option overall. Uh, would that work for the group, first of all? Any opinion? Plus one for 24, Karsten. Both work. 24 is a, a telechat, but it's not, I mean, it doesn't matter if I miss it, I will read the minutes. It's not the most important that I, I join. Oh, okay, thanks. And here, no objection around. So, okay, I will cancel the one for the 16 and reschedule uh, for Thursday 24, same time, 15 UTC. And of course, after it, we'll have one more the week after uh, on March 2nd. And that's going to be the last one before ITF 113. Okay, uh, thanks for the feedback. Anything more you want to discuss today? Um, uh, I just sent a reminder that uh, request for uh, so working that's... group. Okay, so Thanks. is core going to request two hours or yes. or times two or what's the plan? No, I plan to go for one session of two hours. Okay, they, they would okay. be good enough to, to handle everything. I understand the constraints. We would be good. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I have to say that this time um, there is a lot of uh, working groups that have indicated, at least in art, uh, that they won't be meeting because they mm. they've been doing interims instead. Um, but yes, the ASG is always very careful with um, uh, allowing uh, more than one session, more than one two-hour session. Now that we're we're still on a restricted schedule with uh, hybrid. Uh, meetings so oh, if <laughs> yeah but yeah it doesn't apply okay so thanks for the reminder and yes i also don't want to schedule any time that then we don't really need especially in this situation okay uh then we can close the meeting uh thanks a lot for today talk to you again on thursday 24 then thank you thank you Bye -bye. Bye-bye.